Can you tell me what is the gospel? Take a moment to think about that. Express it in a single sentence. Write the gospel down without more than one or two semicolons. If you are a Christian or you grew up in a society with a strong Christian presence, you should be able to say what the gospel is. Even if you have rejected Christianity, shouldn't you be able to express the core of what Christianity proposes and expresses? Otherwise, why did you reject it? Can you ever really reject something that you don't know? I'm going to give you a sentence that proposes to describe the gospel. Do you agree or disagree that it does so adequately? Here's the sentence. Jesus died to pay for our sins so that we can be forgiven and go to heaven if we believe in him. Is that the gospel? Look carefully over that sentence. What is being emphasized? Well, first and foremost, the afterlife is stressed. For many Christians, the afterlife is everything. To hell with this life. What matters is another life, the next one. In fact, if you could somehow convince many, even most, Christians, and Catholics included, that there was no afterlife, they would suddenly find being Christian utterly pointless. Isn't ultimately Christianity otherworldly about heaven and hell? Isn't it about where you, the human being, get to spend eternity? Also, do you see how sin is so central in that sentence? In that understanding of the gospel, sin plays the central role in our life with God. It's the determining factor in the relationship between humans and God. And it is so monumentally important for God to forgive us our sins when you see the gospel according to that sentence. If you're part of a liturgical church, like for example the Catholics are, you cannot miss the role forgiveness of sins plays. If you're Catholic, could you imagine going to Mass without a confession of sins? Or the Kyrie eleison? Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Context group scholar Marcus Borg's Buddhist friend once observed how much we Christians emphasize begging God to forgive us our sins. Said his friend, you Christians must be very bad people. You're always confessing your sins, begging God to forgive you. And how do we get our sins forgiven? Jesus. He died in our place, right? By sinning, we human beings pissed God off, and Jesus paid the terrible price for our sins. Jesus atoned for our sins by way of substituting himself in our place. He satisfied the debt we sinners owed to... Who exactly? The devil? Or God? Well, regardless, Jesus took the fall and paid for us all. There's an old Latin expression, lex orandi, lex credendi. How we pray is how we believe. How we pray, lex orandi, is how we believe, lex credendi. Well, all those prayers and Good Friday rites reinforce a rather brutal understanding of Jesus being substituted in our place and paying satisfaction for our sins, thereby winning us forgiveness. Marcus Bort rightly says this is the default position in the Christian collective consciousness. Finally, notice how this understanding of the gospel emphasizes the importance of believing. What saves us from the fires of hell? Believing does this. And believing this does. 
And along with that comes the commitment to believing also that Christianity understood in these terms is the only way. Look again at that sentence. Jesus died to pay for our sins so that we can be forgiven and go to heaven if we believe in him. My friends, this along with everything just discussed is by and large the common Christianity. Both Catholics and Protestants share it and frankly they take it for granted. Fundamentalist Christians swear by it. But what if I was to tell you that this sentence and what it expresses has nothing to do with the gospel Jesus proclaimed. What if I told you that it also has nothing to do with the gospel that his earliest followers understood and preached? What was the gospel that Jesus proclaimed? The first century Galilean peasant day laborer and folk healer Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of Sky Vault a politically correct Israelite way of saying Kingdom of God. In other words, the gospel or good news proclaimed by Jesus was Israelite theocracy. To this end, Jesus formed a political faction, worked healings, and preached repentance to get Israelite lives in order for the imminent theocracy. Jesus' message or gospel concerned redistributive justice in political religion and political economy. The harbinger of this Israelite theocracy, Jesus said, would be a celestial or astral entity called the Son of Man or the Sky Vault Man, a cosmic figure whom the pre-Paschal Jesus believed to be someone other than himself. Now, admittedly, as far as theology and Christology are concerned, we Christians have come a very long way since these first century understandings. However, nothing in what I just told you about Jesus is made trivial by these developments. This background information is most important. It is the context of Jesus. Everyone, including Jesus, has a context. Without understanding Jesus' context, forget about understanding him or his gospel, much less applying it to 21st century Western lives.